almost two days have passed since the latest patch came through, and now we can start seeing what the best performing decks are after the latest nerfs. Spoiler alert, Aggro Demon Hunter is at the top. If you're serious about Hearthstone, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget you can have it for some Hearthstone coaching. Now, let's check out the decks. You are not prepared! So yeah, to no one's surprise, Aggro Demon Hunter is at the top of the list right now, and with good reason. Like, the deck was huge before the nerfs happened, and it getting untouched basically made it the ultimate Hearthstone deck right now. We have several different iterations of basically 28 of these cards, and we have a few different uh, wild cards like Kane Sun Fury, Pazic is another thing people try to use, and something along those lines basically. We also have a couple of Vicious Litter Spear in this one, which is not something you see in most lists. But yeah, it's basically nice and sticky. We're not running the mech package in this one, basically. So you have room for some other things like that. And uh, the Zilliax here is at the end of your turn deal free damage. As well as uh, at the start of your turn uh, double this minion's attack, which both work pretty well together. The main card that makes this card work so well is obviously the Window Shopper, combined with the Umpire's Grasp so you can actually get this thing down to 3 mana, and the Consequential Demon afterwards is also discounted, and also getting 1 mana Mech Pterodons is also no joke. You also have a couple of red cards in here, you could use it on the opponent's minions, but you can also be using it on your own Mech Pterodons so they can keep on dealing that free damage. You have your Instrument text so you can uh, always ensure getting the Umpire's Grasp on time. And you have several different ways of gaining extra damage with things like Burning Heart, Taste of Chaos can give you extra stuff, Parched Desperado gives you that juicy plus 3 attack, Ball Hog is also 6 damage on a stick, Going Down Swinging is extremely powerful and you could use this while your hero is frozen by the way. Can Sun Fury so you can get through taunts, Metamorphosis basically uh, 10 damage across 2 turns for the price of 6 mana. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the deck. Matchup wise, you don't really have any bad ones as you can see, and mulligan wise, you're basically trying to get the demons out nice and early, so Umpire's Grasp and Instrument Tech are your uh, top keeps. Having good one drops is also definitely helpful. I would rarely really consider keeping the Burning Heart, but maybe if you already have a Vicious Slitter Spear, that might work out pretty beautifully. And same goes for Parse Desperado, I wouldn't really hold on to that all that much. Eladari Studies is fine-ish, I guess, but try to be using it as soon as turn 2 if you already don't have a instrument deck lined up to be playing that turn. And as for on the coin, here's what the stats show again, and it's pretty much the same thing. Wouldn't really hold on to going down swinging, but it could be a very good way for you to actually come back on the board. In combination with, uh, let's say, Burning Heart, that could be a very good turn 4 or turn 5 full board clear like that, as well as extra damage to the mouth. For other good Demon Hunter decks, there's just so many different iterations of this list I already showed you. Uh... This is the one we saw, best performer with very good sample size. There's also a very similar list, but this one is running the mech package as well as POSIC. Uh, it's also doing quite fine. There's also the Highlander variant doing very well, 62%, 1000 games plus. But yeah, it's basically nothing but aggro demon hunters out there, so uh, keep that in mind. On the number 2 spot, we have Spell Token Hunter still doing quite fine, and the nerf didn't really do all that much to it. I mean, obviously, just losing one attack here is all not that big a deal. Uh, and this variant is uh, running the Mantle Shapers, so you're a little bit more spell heavy. We also have Barracoto Bane, so you can fish out those spells nice and good. The only 3 mana spell in this deck is the Saddle Up, so if you already drew both of those, don't expect uh, Barrack to be giving you 3 cards, it's only gonna give you 2. We also have Leroy in here, Zilliax is uh, giving your other minions plus 1, and it's also using the Discount uh, Nerfed module. And yeah, with this deck, you can either zerg the board with a lot of small minions and uh, deal tons of damage with the help of the location and whatnot, or you can also make the board very sticky with the help of Saddle Up. And we have Leroy at the end, so you can finish off the opponent nice and well. And also the Patchwork Pals is giving you extra couple of Huffers and Leox for that extra damage, and that can be huge too. You're still running Observer of Myths, which honestly I thought would be... Uh, dropped from the deck because of the nerf to Awaken Tremors, but it seems like it's still doing quite fine. Matchup-wise, Aggro Demon Hunter is not gonna be great for you, which is surprising given it's actually doing pretty well, and there's tons of Aggro Demon Hunters out there. Tendril Shaman is gonna be 50-50, and same goes for Wheel Warlock, but everything else looks great. Mulligan-wise, here's what it looks like going first. I wouldn't really hold on to Barracoto Bane straight up, but RC Rampage is fine. Sneaky Snakes is basically your best one drop, the weapon is huge. Tormental Musician ain't bad. 
And if you already have a hand that's gonna be going wide, saddle up might also be something to consider. Patchwork Pals is also not a horrible keep, and Vicious Litter Spear is also okay. As for on the coin, Mantle Shaper becomes a lot more keepable because you are getting an extra card and a coin, so that's kinda huge for it, but the rest looks pretty similar. For other good Hunter decks, we have uh, several different iterations of Spell Token uh, Hunter, and there's also this thing called Buff Hunter out there as well, which is uh, using some Death Rattle action in there too but it's definitely not as amazing as the spell token counterpart. On the number 3 spot we have Wheel Warlock, which has been quite the good deck even before the nerfs happened, and now with the Pallies gone, it's even better. With this deck you can either win with the help of the wheel, or you can just zerg the opponent with tons of big minions, like very very big, with the help of your imposing Anubisat, Dark Ally Pact, as well as your Loken. And you can double those up with the help of the location. You're running a good amount of removal in this one too, with things like Defile, Hellfire, Mortal Eradication, and you're even running Pop Garant here for a couple of 4 damage for only 1 mana with lifesteal and that's also huge. The Doomkins are also pretty important, and this way you can ensure that you have a free enough time to actually play the wheel if you're against the slower classes. And we also have Symphony of Sin, which is especially amazing after you play Wheel of Death, so you can actually shuffle back all of those good symphonies, and start drawing all of those instead of taking fatigue damage. Same goes for Phantom, and after the wheel this thing becomes zero insta, and that also is pretty huge, so you're not only playing an 8 mana wheel of death, you're also playing a 15-15 taunt with lifesteal, which is pretty pretty good. This Ziliax is the perfect module with the summon a copy of this, you can also be using the one that uh, uses the perfect module plus uh, reshuffle back into the deck, so again you're not taking fatigue damage after the wheel, but the choice is yours. Matchup wise, it's not amazing against Aggro Demon Hunter, so that's not very great for it, but all around everything else is very positive. As for the Mulligan, it really is gonna come down to the opponent, like if you're against a slow matchup you could even straight up keep the wheel, but if you're against faster opponents you're literally not even gonna be playing the wheel in most of those games, so keep that in mind. And here's what the stats show going second, Doomkin is definitely pretty huge here, but yeah, it's really gonna come down to the opponent, if you're expecting fast aggro you keep a good amount of removal, the location is great, if you're expecting slow you hard look for the wheel and Doomkin basically. For other good warlock decks you're gonna see plenty of different wheel warlocks at the top, but sludge warlock is also playable, still pretty good actually, uh, not very big sample size but the win rate is decent. There's also Pain Warlock apparently, very small sample size, but decent win rate again. And Hand Warlock is just above 50%, but nothing to write home about. On the number 4 spot we have Highlander Warrior, and I'm happy to see this is not the nonsense Yogg variant, but instead this one is running a lot more uh, Excavate Package, tons of good removal, and your big win condition would be uh, Bran into Boom Boss, uh, at the end, and you start drawing and basically deleting the opponent's hands, deck, and battlefield. We're also running Inventor Boom in here, which is kind of weird because you're not really running that many mechs, like I'm seeing Burrow Buster, and Ziliax, I guess, and the Ziliax here is summoning a copy of this plus the perfect module, so that's something. But that's basically it for your 5-man uh, or more mechs, so uh, make sure you actually play a few before you uh, drop Inventor Boom. The cool thing about the Inventor Boom is it actually doesn't need to resurrect different mechs, so I guess you can just play one, and after Brand gets played you get to summon all four of the same thing, so that can be pretty fine too. But yeah, other than that we have tons of control in here, we're even running things like Town Crier, so you can get the mech I guess quickly, that also pulls you Ziliax I guess. We have a single Dirty Rat so you can break some combos and whatnot. And yeah, you're basically familiar with uh, Highlander Warrior lately, it's just running a lot of good cards. We also have a single Viper in here, but honestly that's not even that amazing nowadays because the Aggro Demon Hunters like getting their weapons broken, and the Pallies are not really uh, around anymore, so the Viper is actually something you might consider dropping. Matchup wise, here's what the stats show, you're gonna be amazing against Aggro Demon Hunters, so I guess that's why you're uh, having such good win rates here, but Wheel Warlock and Plague Death Knight are not gonna be your friends, and same goes for Spell Dog. And Hunter, which is gonna be a 50 50 for you. As for the Mulligan, here's what it looks like going first. So I'm not really sure how uh, great it is to straight up hold on to Deep Miner Bran. I think it's better if you actually draw into it later.
later, but uh, I guess if you're not against super quick opponents, you might hold on to it. Sanitize can be great, but uh, again, basically you're looking for the card draw and the good early game removal, but it also is gonna come down to the opponent, so be careful. As for on the coin, here's what the situation looks like. Surprisingly, Brand gets uh, a lot lower here, like, doesn't make too much sense if you ask me. Overall, I think you don't really hold on to Brand all that much. You're trying to draw into it later, but uh, again, you're looking for the good removal and the good card draw. For other good warrior decks, uh, I showed you this one, which is at the top, 59%, almost 3000 games. And the other variations are not doing as hot. Now with the 9 mana Odin, uh, it actually is hurting the deck quite a lot, 52-53%, and that definitely isn't uh, as amazing. There's also actually a mech warrior doing somewhat fine, but it is looking kind of wonky. It's kind of mech uh, menagerie kind of deal, but uh, yeah, I guess it's something to think about. And lastly, we have Plague Death Knight doing quite well, because it's gonna be ruining both uh, Wheel Warlock as well as Highlander decks as they, so uh, that's something to look forward to. It's basically running the standard Plague Package, we have Reska at the end, both the Chain Guardians, the Ziliax here is gonna be again the discount nerfed module, plus the perfect module, which is kinda interesting, but it is gonna help you uh, control the board nice and easy. We also have a couple of Scarab keychains in here, so you can find some of your good 2-drops in most cases, but you could also find something entirely different. Plucky Paint Fin helps you uh, get your rushy minions faster like that, including your Zilli and your Burrow Busters. And yeah, the rest is standard Plague Decay. We don't really have enough stats for matchups just yet. Uh, and as for the mulligan, here's what the stats show going first. You want your, uh, uh, don't look at, uh, the top keeps. There's just two little, little sample sized here. You obviously want the good play cards here, like Helia, Staff. Chill Fallen is nice when you're going first. Kvaldir is also great. And that's usually about it. Wouldn't be too bad holding on to the Mining Casualties or the Scarab Keychain if you don't have your perfect 1 and 2 drops already, though. As for on the coin, it's not that much different. Again, Helia is great. For other good Death Knight decks, I showed you this one. Uh, a little bit of a small sam smaller sample size, but still almost 59%. Again, there's a bigger sample size at uh, 57%, which is also looking pretty amazing. And honestly, the difference here is just the Ziliax in it. So uh, yeah, this one is also doing quite fine. Rainbow DK is out there doing somewhat okay still, even though smaller sample sizes. Here's a big sample size, almost 55% win rate, so that's not that bad. So yeah, that's about it for Death Knight right now. As for the classes we haven't mentioned, starting off with Druid, so far Aviana hasn't picked up all that much. Here's a list with her, a uh, small sample size, mediocre win rate, but playable I guess. Highlander Druid is also out there, again using uh, Aviana. Trying to make the most of her, and the rest of the decks are just not great. Straight up of Yama Druid is kinda horrible. For mages, Elemental Mage seems to be at the top right now, but also Rainbow Mage is definitely playable if you want that route. And I'm pretty happy to see that Just Spell Mage is still absolute dog shit. Pally is the biggest loser of the patch, obviously. You still have a couple of 57% win rate decks at the top, however, so it's definitely not absolute garbage. But it's, def but it's also definitely nowhere near the 65-70% win rate we have been seeing it at. With Priest, Zerimi Priest is actually doing quite good. You can check out my new video about it. It's uh, not an easy deck to pilot well, but if you get the hang of it, you can definitely do some pretty crazy things. Highlander Priest is still horrible, and Automation Priest is basically unplayable nowadays. With Rogues, we have Mech Rogue at the top, decent sample size, decent win rate. Miracle Rogue is also doing somewhat fine. There's also Weapon Rogue out there with the help of Sonya, which actually dodged the nerfs, but I guess the deck is kind of horrible right now. And those will be your free uh, uh, good variants right now. There's also Wishing Rogue out there, but it's under 50, so there's that. And lastly we have Shaman, with Highlander Shaman doing decently well. Nature Shaman still looks playable apparently, above 53% win rate, small sample size. It's no longer running the gift obviously because there's nothing good in there anymore. But yeah, those will be your two options for Shaman right about now. So that's gonna be it for this video guys. Hope this helps you figure out what you want to be playing after the latest patch. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget you can have me for some Hearthstone coaching. Thanks for watching. I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.